Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition, it's the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, brought to us by Jalico. Based off the television series of the same name, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles has us playing as the Young Indiana Jones, going through several levels, battling a bunch of enemies along the way. Here we go with Young Indiana Jones Chronicles for the NES. As we begin the game, you can turn on and off the music as well as on and off the cutscenes, interestingly enough. And we do have a short cutscene before jumping into level 1. As we begin the game, we're gonna head over to the right. You notice that we have our whip, but unfortunately when we get hit, we do end up losing whichever weapon we have currently equipped, which is a bit annoying. Here you can push this boulder down and run along with it. It'll take out the enemy in front of you. Be careful of the different things here, the quicksand, that you don't get pulled down into it. Get ready to jump over this horse after knocking its rider off of it before running over to the right and getting to the next screen. Watch when you push this boulder down, one of the enemies from the left will fire a bullet, so wait for that to go past before going down. Down here we're going to grab the grenade, so we have another weapon here. This works out well for us. We're going to be careful, though, to keep that grenade as we make our way through the rest of the level here. Watch out for the tornado, as well as the giant cannonballs raining down from the sky. Just kind of keep moving through the area. As this boss battle begins, run over to the right and take out the cannons first. Then you have to start taking out the soldiers on the ground. Take them out from afar if possible. Watching out for bullets coming down from the guy in the tower above. After you take out a few soldiers, he will come down. Hit him immediately as he does, and then you can kind of stand right here on the left side and throw grenades at him and hit him while watching out for most of his gunfire. It only takes a couple of hits to knock him down, and then we're moving on to the next level. As the next stage begins, start off by dropping on down. Be sure to grab the light there so you can see at least where you're going. Jump carefully between the various platforms here as they're moving up and down. Don't want to accidentally fall into the spikes. Head on down here, being careful to go the right direction so you don't land in spikes, and head over to the right and climb up the couple of ladders. Be careful climbing down this ladder, jumping to the right side. Run across this bridge that will break as you do so. Just move quickly when you do. Spring yourself up here and grab the light so you can see what's going on. Here we're able to grab a gun that can help us out as we can fire farther away now. Head to the left along the bottom and drop down the hole into the next screen. 
Drop down the left side when you get down here in order to grab the light. From that point, move to the moving conveyor belts one by one. Sometimes you may have to wait a moment for it to come to you. Just carefully jump and you should have no problem getting through the area. A couple of bats may get in your way. Drop down the edge here and get sprung right back up into the ceiling and then over to the left now. And drop down another hole in order to go to the next screen. Immediately hold right when you drop and you'll be able to grab a hold of the next light and then right over to the right to get to the next screen. As we begin the next area, start climbing on up, being careful as the thing breaks apart. We then have to deal with this soldier. Eventually, he will drop some throwable projectiles. This is pretty much every boss will give you at least a weapon for the fight. Just throw your weapon a couple of times up is all it takes in order to defeat him, and grab the statue to move on to the next stage. We've now traveled to France, and we're going to head over to the right side here. Watch out for the planes that will come in from above, and they kind of fire a spread shot that can be difficult to get in between the bullets of. Jump over this car enemy as it comes towards you. Then quickly get into the mud-like stuff and kind of jump your way through. You can grab a hold of a motorcycle right after that and use that to ride along. You can run over enemies while riding this. Thankfully you can turn around in it, it can even jump in the swamp-like stuff, so kind of funny overall, but... After the cutscene, we continue on here in France. We have the gun now at our disposal, and thankfully that's decent enough for hitting enemies from afar. Watch out for the planes overhead dropping missiles. Thankfully moving between these uh, different platforms isn't too difficult. Right here you kind of got to navigate through a maze of barbed wire. Just be careful not to run into it at all. Sometimes it's best to wait for the missiles to land and then continue on before now we're moving in this wonderful muck again. Unfortunately, getting hit and losing our weapon. You do have your fist whenever you don't have your main weapon, at least. As soon as we begin the next screen, we're facing off with a boss. We're going to start off by grabbing grenades and then throwing a few at them. You can duck underneath some of the fire if you're staying close. It's usually the best strategy I have, as this allows me to get away from most of the enemy fire and still be able to deliver hits of my own.
Next up, we're at this big waterfall. Start off by going to the right and then climbing up a little bit, working your way then back over to the left side. Thankfully, between the areas, we also get weapons back, so we have our whip again. Here, wait for this enemy to fire out his whole set of two bullets and a grenade before jumping towards him and taking him out. You have to very carefully jump here. Just a lot of singular platforms. Thankfully, the platforming in general isn't too bad in this game. It's actually not bad at all, so you shouldn't have too much trouble at least getting through the platforming aspects of this game. Unfortunately, sometimes, no matter how careful you are, even attacking an enemy from behind, you can still end up getting hit quickly. Continue climbing up to the top through the singular platforms, enemies firing at us from the left side. I'm gonna try to avoid them as much as I can. As soon as we get to the next screen, quickly get to the top and get off the ladder because a grenade is going to come your way right away. I always usually end up getting hit by that, but I was able to barely escape this time. Here we go with the next big boss encounter. We're going to start off by going over to the right side. We can get the extra armor piece here, as well as the grenade. I'm going to throw these grenades up at the opening at the top here, the j and keep on throwing them. Even if I get hit, just keep grabbing the grenade. As soon as it reappears, you can grab it again, and it counts as another free hit. So, really, this boss is pretty easy, because you can keep getting free hits by grabbing those grenades and just launching them up every time you grab one, and then the vulnerability time be able to hit him without him being able to hit you a second time. Onwards to level number three here in Germany. I'm gonna start moving along this train, heading over to the right side. Pretty straightforward area, as would be expected with a train-like segment. Just gotta work our way slowly, dealing with the soldiers, wait for them to fire, since we can't really attack too far from a distance. The whip is a decent enough hit range, but at the same time, it ends up being a little too short for some situations. As soon as we come to the end, I'm going to immediately get close to the enemy and whip him a few times, then get out of the way of the couple of boxes that he throws. Thankfully, it's very easy if you're close to dodge most of them. After a few moments, a plane will show up and have a ladder for you. The next segment is a scrolling shooter segment to kind of break up the gameplay a little bit. Overall, pretty simple controls. Just moving and being able to fire your gun at the various enemies, some of which will come from behind, so you have to be careful and be a little bit away from the far left if possible. You can grab missiles along the way to be able to drop them as well as be able to fire out your main gun. Eventually, you'll come to this plane flying around, and that's the end of the area. At 
the second area, we now have to take on the Red Baron. Basically, we're gonna stay on the left side, and he'll dive bomb constantly. And this will allow us to fire at when he comes close. Now, at the same time, when he comes onto the screen, if we still have our bomb ability and he stops, we're gonna get above him and just bomb the crap out of him in order to finish him off quickly. Next up, head up this ladder right away and grab the flashlight so you can see things a little bit better. Here with our pistol in hand, we can thankfully attack enemies from a decent distance. Work your way over to the far right side and take the elevator down to the next level. Start climbing up the various platforms. Over to the right side, you'll notice the flashlight, so go over there and grab that real quick. And then continue heading up north to the top of the platforms. Attack this guy from a distance before heading to the left and dropping down. Then carefully move between the electrical fields here, just one by one, just step in between them as they're going on and off. Do that again in the next section right here. Climb up the ladder and take out the guy at the top, then continue over to the left side. Climbing up this set of platforms up to the top level, you'll see the switch. Fire at it to destroy it. That gets rid of a wall that we would run into. Drop down a couple of levels now to the bottom level and head to the left, watching out again for more electricity. Here, once again, climb on up, deal with this enemy first. Unfortunately, I mess up several times on this ladder, but eventually I do get it. At the very top in the left side here, you'll find this switch. Destroy it, and that gets rid of that metal wall we just saw a moment ago. Head over here now to the left and down the next elevator. From here, head over to the left, jumping on the platforms to get to the next one of the flashlights. Jump over this tank if possible, waiting for it to come to you before you end up making that jump. And that way you can just kind of run along the next little area. Here you'll come to another one of these metal doors, just work your way along the platforms above it, and hit the switch over to the left, and then drop on back down and over to the right, onto the next screen for the next boss. For this fight, I'm going to hit him from a distance and then jump over him when he does his slide towards me. I'm going to get in between the various bullets that fall down from the ceiling and just keep focusing my fire. It doesn't take many shots in order to defeat him. We are slowly nearing the end of the game, just a little bit more to go. Here we're going to go on down to the elevator and drop on down to the next floor. You'll slowly work your way down. Work your way now over to the right side, climbing up the ladder. There's a few enemies here, but not too much as you make your way up. Here you can destroy this box and find the extra hit point. Thankfully we get hit here and have that extra hit point so we don't end up losing our whip. Just run across, deal with each one of these enemies as you need to and get to that next elevator.
Now be very careful, of course, you do not want to fall down into the boiling hot tar, oil, whatever it is down below. Work your way over here, you'll see this guy with a flaming stick in his hand. When you take him out, the flame will, of course, go up in the air and then land onto the oil, causing it to burst into flames. So you gotta be careful to get out of the way of it when that happens. Unfortunately, this tank ends up hitting us and we lose our whip. Just gotta be extra careful, duck underneath the bullets and get close with our fist for the last few enemies here, before going inside this door. Just be careful of this last area, it is time for the final boss battle of the game. Just gotta get past the last couple of enemies. For this fight, your goal is to get up on top and attack this center structure. You gotta punch it at the right moment in order to hit it. At the same time, you also have to dodge its projectiles, which can be easier said than done. Anytime you land a hit, immediately get into the lower right corner and duck. That way you can get out of the way of all of its firing power and be able to survive to the next round. Even if it does its other form, like you can see right here, it still ends up missing you while you're ducking. So it's just the best strategy to just be in the corner, away from those bullets. It ends up being a relatively lengthy fight because of this, but still, it doesn't end up being too bad because you're able to at least automatically dodge that one set of attacks each time. One last hit to go, just dodging that last time. Get up there, deliver the final blow, and we can sit back and enjoy the ending to the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles on the NES. So there you have it, the young Indiana Jones Chronicles for the NES. While I've seen all the Indiana Jones films, I've never actually seen the young Indiana Jones Chronicles television show. Were you a fan of the show at any point? Are you a big Indiana Jones fan? Either way, that's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.